Hey guys, welcome to today's session. Today we're doing a dirty squat session, 10 sets of 10 at 70% of our one rep max. And we're also doing uh, some Olympic lifting. This is my friend Christian's gym, uh, ex Royal Marine. Uh, done a couple of tours of Afghan. Um, so we're training there today at functional strength. Um, so we'll just have a bit of, uh, you know, we'll chat about Royal Marine's life, etc. have a bit of banter and um, get some stinky squats in. So uh, let's go inside. Yeah, so obviously today we're doing uh, 10 sets of 10. We've built up up to this weight, so um, we're doing between us uh, 105 up to 120, uh, 10 sets of 10. So we started this cycle, what was it, two, three weeks ago? This is week, uh, this is week three now. So this is uh, week three with our, uh, doing two back squat sessions a week with the, the third session, or the session in between being a front squat. So. Yeah, it's only um, what, two, four, it's only our fifth sort of back squat session within that um, amount of time. But it's all been done, I suppose, uh, intelligently and smartly and just overloading in those sessions. Yeah, 100%. It, we, we were just saying as well that the, the first session, which was five sets of 10, uh, feels a lot harder than the 10 tens. Even though on paper, obviously, the 10 tens is a lot harder, but it's that adaptation over a couple of weeks. You know, we, if we'd thrown ourselves straight into 10 tens, um, it absolutely in hurt locker, but we've allowed ourselves to adapt to the stresses and uh, gradually build into it. And, that, and that's super important, and, and that's what the Royal Marines try to do uh, within training. It's not always uh, completely manageable, but you wouldn't be able to. Most people, if they tried the 30 miler in the first week of training, would biff out. But by the end, you know, it's very rare for people to fail. You get some serious injuries from it, you know what I mean? And um, I think any type of physical training needs to be approached the same way, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, it's, um, we came off a, a high intensity um, cycle just with the last weightlifting program. Obviously, we're peaking for a meet, so we've then just sort of done a bit of a deload for two weeks, and now just joined back into um, a high volume cycle. Um, it's good build up into the Christmas, so it takes a bit of stress off the body because obviously that staying at that high intensity for a long period of the time it, um, absolutely batters that central nervous system and um, it tends the ligaments. They feel it, so. This puts a different stress on it, but it's a different type of stress. It's uh, less mental stress, I'd say, doing this high volume. All you've got to do is turn up and get the work done. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a lot easier when you do this. and It's just putting down a more solid platform, I'd say, mm -hmm. for the new year coming in. You've got to choose the right times to do it. Yeah. Um, I think at the moment, building up to Christmas is a great time. You come in, train, everyone's working hard, and that'll build up anyway till Christmas, so it's one last thing. One less thing to have to stress about, isn't it, mm. with the training? But it's got to be done smartly. It's got to be done with a bit of intelligence, you know. Mm, definitely, yeah. And people tend to scram more as well at Christmas time. Exactly. You know, that, so. Yeah, yeah. Use that. Use that fuel for something. Even if it's not the best fuel, you know what I mean. All everything that goes in is fuel. Yep. So uh, if you're consuming more than usual, a little bit of extra volume, I suppose, goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. Would you say that's one of the hardest things about like Royal Marines training is the you're at that high intensity for such an extended amount of time, like you're talking minimum nine months. Um, yeah, it is. But like you say, it's um, when you do start, you know, you're not cracking a lot of mileage at one go. So they'll, they'll almost do it in the sort of uh, they'll, they'll break it down in bite-sized chunks. Mm. So doing a few miles a day. To a tribute to what you need to do at the end of the, of the sort of training section. I'd say you cover less mileage towards the end daily, but, yeah. but once a week you could be expected to um, big old high volume. Yeah, run. cover cover a, a large amount of miles. Mm -hmm. Which, when you look back towards the start of your training, I suppose you um, you're not you know you realise I, I probably was covering 10, 20 miles a week. It was spaced out over the period of six, seven days. Yeah, and it was done in like 800 meter intervals. Yeah, 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 and yeah. That that's something that people were always surprised by on the on the training program is that like 
they'll come in, they'll go like, hey, I was, I was running a lot more mileage before the program. Like, yeah, but you're, the first nine weeks of training, and not including the new, the new rock phase, which is four weeks, you are just literally doing 800 meter runs. Mm. Like, it's very, you're not gonna go and bang a six miler out. Like, I think the, the furthest you run without kit is probably a four mile run back from Woodbury probably at some point. Yeah, yeah, and you're, and you're hanging out when you're doing it. Yeah. You know, so, it, and that does make you question yourself, but it's like when we're doing these squats, like I said, after doing five sets of 10, and the first week, you start questioning yourself, going, I won't be able to do, <laughs> yeah. I won't be able to do 10 sets of 10 of these. Um, so, you know, it's when you build up now, doing the the, the volume and the intensity, I suppose, yeah. doing the 10 sets of 10. It, it, it's all it's all about managing that load properly yeah. and, and uh, like you say you need to do that for all aspects you know that you were saying it before every session doesn't need to be the hardest session yeah. you've ever done yeah but every session does need to be getting you closer to the goal that you're trying to achieve yeah. you know what i mean if one session is working out how to become more mobile how to recover better how to jump further express power more whatever it needs to be to get you there, you know yeah. what I mean? If one session is just literally working on pull-up technique, that's fine because that'll get you to a, an end goal of being able to do better at pull-ups, which is obviously an important requirement. But you don't need to do too many pull-ups every single day. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that's something that I've started to become much more aware of as I got older. It's like, it's all well and good when you're sort of tw in your 20s and you're Royal Marine and like, there's never a rest day and you're just cracking on, but like now in my 30s, I appreciate rest days a lot more and like the adaptation phase of like, yeah, I can go and bang out seven days a week training twice a day, but is that actually beneficial? Like, do you need to? Yeah, do, yeah, do I need to for yeah. what I'm trying to achieve? And also, what's the benefit of it? Like, I'm not do, resting. You need to do a lot of what you want and a lot of what you like, and you need to try and align those two views. And that's quite, that's quite hard, you know I mean? I love lifting weights, I love squatting. I love trying to get as much weight on the bar as I possibly can, mm. which for some people is a lot of weight, for some people it's a little bit of weight. Um, but you've got to try and align that. I can't just do that all year round, trying yeah, to get as much yeah. weight on the bar as possible because I'm, I'm going to suffer. So um, it's, it's, it's the same with all your training. You need to find a lot of what you like. If you are a body weight warrior and you love all that type of stuff, mm. then that's great. But you also can't neglect those... Uh, you can't neglect that resistance training. You're gonna to yeah. need to make sure that when you put a 70 kilo bag on your back, that that 70 kilos isn't anywhere near mm. your one rep max deadlift. Yeah. Because you're gonna to have to lift that bag off the floor multiple times. Yeah. And you can't be doing a one rep max deadlift four or five times an hour. Yeah. Same yeah. as walking around with it on your back. If your best squat is 80 or 90 kilos and you're walking around with a 60, 70 kilo bag on your back, you're walking around with a massively it's high massive, percentage yeah, yeah. Um, of weight on your back. So you need to ensure that any weight that sits on your shoulders that you carry is a very low percentage of what you can lift resistance-wise. Yeah. Um, that's where strength training comes in. Yeah, that's why we, why we really value uh, squats and deadlifts on the, um, on the gym program. It's so, so important. And I, I wish, like, here's a question for you. Like, if you could go back to uh, redoing your whole career again, what would you do differently in the build-up that you weren't doing? I know you were like a little racing snake, so you'd run like three times nine miles a, a, a week. Yeah. So you were all over the the, uh, the running and the cardio. But is there is there any other elements of training you'd do getting oh, ready yeah. for the Royal Marines? I was weak as piss, so yeah, I needed the, the strength. And that stuff, you, did you suffer from in training because of that? Yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a bag on me and I was terrible. So um, pull-ups I was poor at, uh, wasn't strong enough. Um, you know, rope climbs, my upper body strength wasn't good enough. Yeah, yeah it wasn't it was nowhere near good enough. And it only progressed as training progressed in the Marines, but I didn't do myself, I did myself a massive disservice by going in there weaker yeah. than I should have. I went like, in there as fit as I needed to, but a lot weaker than I needed to. Yeah. So, um, so like lads would go into like the gym phase and be like, buzzing like our rope climbs they wouldn't they wouldn't have that mental stress of like we're going to do rope climbs whereas you might be thinking flip i've got rope climbs oh, yeah, later was massive anxiety every time i go to the rope climbs yeah. in terms of thinking oh shit here we go again just using my arms too much a lot of tendonitis yeah as a result of um not being squared away on the technique yeah goes for anything doesn't it but legend mate sound mate nice one bro no worries cheers buddy.